Hey guys, and welcome to a special edition of the DW Pod. We got a guest today, Josh Band with Plate Crate, joining us via Zoom. Uh, we'll bring this special episode you guys talk talk a little bit about Plate Crate and talk a little bit goofy stuff. Josh, how's it going, man? Great. Appreciate you guys having me on. But I can see you guys now. <laughs> Glad we got that worked out. Uh, man, tell us, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, you know, who you are, what you do. Let me know where you're from. So I started in 2015. It's kind of like the side project just to help subsidize my income from Indie Ball. And um, we've just kept growing from there. So uh, when I stopped playing Indie Ball, um, I went full time with Play Crate. And, and uh, yeah, now we have, you know, thousands of uh, monthly members and we just uh, launched Soccer Crate. In November, so we're trying to expand it into some more sports. And um, if you're not familiar with Play Crate, it's a monthly box of baseball gear and training aids. So it's like a themed box of baseball goodies every month. It's a pretty cool deal. Yeah. I, um, these guys have got a huge social media following. I saw that, uh, like 144,000 uh, Instagram followers, and I don't know how many uh, monthly subscribers you got to the actual crates, but I mean, big presence on social media. Uh, it's pretty cool. The kids yeah, seem to love it. Yeah, too. we we've dug, yeah, we've dug into social media like like crazy. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and that was kind of like our our competitive advantage. I played baseball for so long, and the people that work here played baseball, so we we get what baseball players are going through. If you're, you know, eight, nine, ten, all the way up till you know college, professional age, like we we're baseball people. You know, we mm-hmm. we spent a lot of time in batting cages, so we we get it. And yeah. so building a community around baseball players was pretty natural for us. Well, starting out, what were some of the bigger challenges you faced? Because it's a great idea. I know what you're talking about because sometimes I subscribe to some things, you know, uh, cologne for men. You know, got to have my different smells. Get the cologne box. Got to get the cologne yeah, box. Scent- Multiple colognes. Majority of them smell terrible. Yeah, scent- Do you got scent-, scent bird? Uh, what, it might be, yeah. And then I also have the wine. Yeah. They have has a wine one. Rec- highly recommend. But for you getting started, <laughs> what, what were some of the challenges you faced? Uh, yeah, I mean, like any new company, it was obviously acquiring customers, but yeah. the, I would say the, the big problem when we started, uh, was just like getting a great product. Like looking yeah. back on our product in 2015 to, to 2018, it just wasn't even like comparable to what it is today. Cause we were basically buying wholesale from people and then we were putting it in a crate. So we were basically selling this like fun box of curated stuff, but it wasn't, it wasn't this massive value because we yeah. had to buy it wholesale. Um, and since then we've started bandit sports, which is our private label. So we've actually started inventing and kind of tweaking our own items that aren't sold in store, uh, mm. in stores. Like we just came out with like, um, like these mini easy curves. They're like little golf ball size foam balls and you throw them and they curve different ways. Um, so now we have like this awesome you know product because we kind of hit that, hit that scale where we can manufacture our own stuff. But starting on the early days, it was just tough to make like an incredible product that people are excited about. And not only make a great experience and a great product, but give them a great value. So right, they're right. getting kind of everything at once. And, and uh, that took a, a lot of years and a lot of time to get there because we needed to, to hit a certain number of customers before we'd get those price breaks. Correct. Uh, oh, so yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a grind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You guys get it. I mean, 2015, though, that's pretty, I mean, to get to where you are now. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, pretty quick growth. I, mean, I bet you had yeah, people I mean, fighting to get in that, y- y'all's play crate box, too. Like how how many times yeah. do you have you know you get the DMs like hey check this out? We get a DM every day. <laughs> uh, it's like, can we get in, into your crate? Like, will you pay us? And I'm like, now it's kind of the other way around. Like, we'll do you know if we love a product and yeah. you know, we want to we want to show it to our audience or or if you're launching a product and we really love that product, um, you know we'll we'll figure out some way to to work together. But we just can't buy wholesale. Right. And then give give our customers like a huge value. So we we don't buy wholesale anymore from people, but we do work with other brands. Um, you know, if we love their product and we want everyone to see it. Um, but yeah, we just don't buy wholesale. But yeah, we get like a DM a day. Like, can you can you buy a ton of stuff from us? Give us a ton of money, and then in return, you guys give us a ton of free marketing. Oh, so not even um, like a cool item. They just money pushing. Yeah. Oh, get out of here. We ain't time for that. They're just just selling wholesale, yeah. but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, everyone's trying to hustle and it's, it's always, I still appreciate people reaching out, but um, yeah, like, and that's how we used to do business back, you know, back in 2015, 16, 17, I would have loved those back then. And, and now since we're doing our own manufacturing, it's a, a little bit different, but yeah, I mean, I, I just love way. that people. 
We definitely yeah. started I in the wholesale. Still business. want to be in the box. Sure. Yeah, yeah. There's a huge difference in the yeah. wholesale, and then the you know the ability to create your own stuff. I mean, it opens up so many more doors. Um, and I'm sure in, in your guys' instance, you, you're probably able to test a few products to see if it, something really catches on, um, which is pretty neat. Yeah, no, we, we test a ton of products. And then we also, since we have our private label of Bandit Sports, we've are actually started becoming a wholesaler. So we went from buying wholesale to actually uh, becoming a wholesaler. So we're starting to build that out a little bit. Again, since we, we have like these, these uh, you know, products that no one else has, um, you know, we can tweak tooling and, and uh, you know, where we're manufacturing everything or we can come up with our own, our own custom stuff. And then, yeah, we can, we can wholesale them since no one else is doing it. All right, Josh, I got some questions for you. Nothing to do with Blake Creek. This is all about you right here. We got all the, we got all the silly <laughs> stuff out of the way. Now yeah. it's time to get to the serious all right. stuff. <laughs> as far as movie wise, you and you big into the movies, like the superhero movies and whatnot. I am not into the Marvel movies, but Chris and Jesse who are in the office right now are yeah. like the biggest Marvel fans. And I never know what they're talking about. Cause they're constantly talking about, uh, Marvel drops and everything. I know nothing about Marvel, but, I do like I, so, I like one Marvel. Are we doing first. Marvel at all or DC as well? You don't do Batman, Superman either. I like I've seen all the Batman movies. I think they're fantastic. I have no idea what universe anything's in. I like, got I'm you. So out of the loop <laughs> when it comes to superhero movies. Well, did you watch they, the last Batman? Everything. Did you watch the last Batman? <laughs> Which one was the last? Batman? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so what you, kind of movies do you? Like? Well, yeah, let's just start the there. Dark- was, was it, it the, the Dark, dark Knight? No, no, it was not. The Dark Knight ri- Rises, <laughs> the, right? There yeah. was one that came out recently with uh, Goth Batman. What was that one called? The Batman. Oh, The Batman. I'm making fun of you. Oh, I forgot Batman. the name of the movie. Yeah. It's just The Batman. The Batman with Penguin and Catwoman. All right, well, that absolutely <laughs> destroys that question I had, Al. How about you take it from here? <laughs> See, Josh, you're like me, meaning you're not a nerd watching this stuff. So Hey, you don't have to it's be a nerd. I- John chimes in once and just absolutely disses nerds. That's it's one thing for the day. Thanks, John. You get a big nerd audience, John. Yeah. We got I will it. say at the yeah. beginning, at the beginning of COVID, when I was trapped, you know, we were quarantined in our apartment in uh, what it was in 2020. Me and my wife watched like a ton of them in a row, so I felt like a little bit up to speed. But okay, I, I, I forgot about it. It's not that I, I like I like them all. I just haven't I haven't dove in head first. Speaking like of the quarantine, though, yeah. So right when this deal kicked off, the whole COVID thing, yeah. we were actually in Boston. I was in Boston. Like the weekend that they canceled the NCAA tournament, they canceled the Masters, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it was the second time I had been. And I love Boston; it's a, it's a cool place. But that was the wildest experience of my life. Everything like we try to go to restaurants, everything was shutting down because you were scared to fly back. Y'all yeah. didn't know if y'all were going to fly back. We didn't know what we were going to do. Uh, I mean, this it was it was wild. Let me try again, Josh. Do you like the Celtics? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I saw that shoulder. I saw the shoulder. Not at all. Okay. I'm I'm such like a bandwagon fan. Like okay. even even grow, growing up here, like I love I love the Red Sox. I love going to Fenway. I grew up going to Fenway. If the you know, Celtics Celtics Bruins Pats like anybody, if they're in the playoffs, I'm like I'm I'm there for it. But like regular season, I'll, I'm I'm like just tuning in on like Instagram or TikTok or something, f- figuring out what happens. But going definitely to Fenway. definitely heavy on the Red Sox. Going to Fenway is something everybody should do. Really, it's a it's a neat experience. Is it up there with Brian Dean? Uh, it's a different <laughs> it's a different experience than that. Okay, like he would really enjoy going to Brian Denny, whereas you would really enjoy going to Fenway because it's so old. It's just the history at that place. It's, it's I'm broken. more about the ballpark food. What kind of dogs we got at this place, Josh? Do you know what Brian they Denny got, is? They, they, do I do I know what? Do you know what Bryant Denny is? Bryant Denny? I don't know what Bryant Denny yeah. is. Yeah. See, I knew that was the case. So it's the Alabama to, football I, I stadium. It's the Alabama. The University of Alabama. Yeah. The Crimson Tide oh, of Alabama. Gotcha. Yeah. You know what? Up up north it's it's all it's all pro football. Right. There's like no one not a ton of college fans. Although oh, no way sounds, like they they ex- <laughs> sounds like an excuse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They don't have any good football teams up there. No, dude, they college. got Boston College, don't they? they oh, yeah. Luke Keechley, uh Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, yeah. Ten years ago? Yeah, right, ten years ago. No one followed. <laughs> Probably Boston longer college. than that. <laughs> I tried, man. I really tried. I couldn't think of somebody else. 
But yeah. no, back to the ballpark food. So let's let's discuss that a little bit. What what is the best thing at Fenway or around? Because I I've been to a game at Fenway. I know that there's a lot of stuff around Fenway that's pretty good. So and what's your me, opinion on? Let it? me come yeah. at it from a perspective is I don't go to the big ballpark. So in my mind, it's still about a sour straws and oh popcorn. God, get that out of here. I, that's when the last time I was at a park, man. Don't get mad at me. That's why we're asking Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're a Fenway, Fenway Frank is like their hot dog, right? You get okay. like a Fenway Frank. It's just a normal hot dog, right? You can get a foot long hot dog. They're great. They're just like, they're like KM hot dogs and KM's like a local like hot dog factory. Honestly, Fenway food isn't like, isn't the best, but uh, it's just like normal ballpark food and it's crazy expensive beers. But Fenway's like a whole area in mm-hmm. Boston. So there's like Fenway is like a neighborhood. Gotcha. So there's like a ton of fun stuff to do in, in uh, like the Fenway area and Boston University is there, BU. Um, so there's a ton of good like restaurants and bars. And then Lansdowne Street is is fun. And there's like a bunch of music venues actually that are right there. So if you want to go see live music, you can go live I'm music. Down for that. It's a baseball neat game. It's a cool spot. Yeah. There, and then there's actually, there's Berkeley, like a music um, college around Fenway too. So there's a ton of like, just like local bars that have a ton of, a ton of music. It's a good music area. You never think Fenway is like great, great for life. That music, is interesting. Now in you've Bo- got in, my attention. In Boston. Yeah. Yeah. I don't House think of Boston is being has a, a lot of con- concerts. You don't think of Boston as being a, you know, hub of, of also music. no way am I going to eat a foot long hot dog in public. That's just not happening. Why not? <laughs> Why wouldn't you do that? Dude, yeah. no, no way. What's the? How do you eat a foot long hot wog and still keep your hot wog? Man, that's a hot wog. <laughs> hot wong. What all right, just, all right, John. That's enough out of you. So, all right, Josh, you go to a, a game. You go to a, a right, <laughs> Red Sox game. I can't. It's too early. Uh, you go to a Red Sox game. You got to eat. What do you? Where are you eating? We just what? asked him that. Yeah, but I no, I want to yeah. know specifically. Yeah, specifically. Like something quick. There's a Pizzeria Regina right there. Okay. Pizzeria Regina is like like quintessential Boston pizza. Like if you had to pick one place to go, you would get Pizzeria Regina in the North End. Um, and then they have another one by Fenway, so that's good. There's like a like a tasty burger there, which kind of like an In and Out burger if you want something quick. Um, and then there's like my favorite coffee shop is, is right there, Tate. Which is like a like a bougie little coffee spot, you know what I mean? So you can go hang out there and <laughs> that's what get, John a, would get like go. a cappuccino before the game. You can go either way. You can bougie go, you can little go coffee spot. Pizza. You can get slices of pizza and like a cheap beer or like a burger, or uh, or you can go to you know another place. But yeah, a lot of people go to like Cassian Flagon and and uh, like Loretta's. Um, what's Loretta's name? Loretta's Last Call or something like that. There's like a bunch of bars behind Fenway, yeah. and people will just go there all day and just hang out and and have food and, and, and just kind of relax before the game. So there's yeah. a ton of places all around Fenway that just circle Fenway to go to. Yeah. It seems like if you want to have a bad time, mix beer and coffee. That just made my stomach start roaring. I want no part of that. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you would definitely find me in the bougie coffee shop uh, with my <laughs> MacBook Air. And there you did, go. how are their, sto- their uh, scones? Are their scones oh, pretty good? John, what? Oh, they're, they're delightful. What is there wrong you go. with you? All right. Uh, we're going to have to mute. <laughs> go ahead, Thomas. Go ahead. No, I'm out. You talk about, ugh. Anyway, so we have one question on here before we get out of here. It's one we've had across the office. Start a little bit of discussion. Is cereal a soup or not? Oh, I like that. Let me think about this one. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Because I, I think if you're asking this question last, it's important. And the answer might, <laughs> might not be as clear as Well, there's a lot of room for debate here. I mean, you know, the definition of soup yeah. is a solid in a liquid, essentially. What? When you boil it down. Okay. Boil it down to that. All right. All right. Now, one I, could say that, that it has to be a meat or a vegetable. And it has to be hot. But there are cold soups. Correct. So... I don't know. It's up to Josh. It's not up to me. It's up to Josh. I'm I'm saying no. And because I think even a cold soup would be a gazpacho, right? Because you can have like a cold soup. Yeah. So like soup would be hotter. And then it's like a bunch of stuff like emulsified together. And like a cereal isn't. It's two things combined. So uh, it's like. Yeah, so I I don't I don't think so. Yeah. And he just went Mr. Science on us. That's a good explanation. (laughs) But I think that cereal is a dessert soup. 
A dessert soup? A dessert soup. Now, is that a real thing, or are we just making up for this argument? I don't know. Uh, I, maybe I'm making I it up. I don't ever. If want... I saw dessert soup <laughs> in the cereal aisle, I would, I would buy it. See? For sure. But if I saw dessert soup on a menu, I wouldn't. <laughs> Mm. I'd probably get up and leave. What, well, see, what establishment eat, has I, dessert soup? I eat cereal as dessert, so that's why to me it's. There's no soup. doubt about it. If you, if at some point in your life you weren't finishing your night with some Lucky Charms, a little CTC <laughs> Frosted Flakes, I don't think you lived. CTC is Cinnamon Toast Crunch for the listeners who don't understand. If they don't understand it, John, they just don't deserve to be here. They should know that by now. <laughs> I agree with that statement. 100%. <laughs> Josh, man, we really appreciate it. That actually went quite well. Our first interview. Yeah, our first interview, the first guest on the DW Pod. Yeah. Give us a, give them a little shout out where they can find you, at, if not already. Uh, yeah, you can follow us on Instagram at Plate Crate, P L A T E C R A T. Our website's uh, platecrate.com. Uh, pretty much anywhere you're on social media, you can just follow us at Plate Crate. Um, that's pretty much it. All right, man. Well, hey, thanks again, man. Appreciate you all for tuning in. Thank you.